Good morning, everybody. This is Lee Brower, and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. I am glad to be here, and I am grateful to be here. And I am glad to be home, glad to be back from Hawaii. Lori and I spent a glorious week last week with Carly and Matt, Matthew, uh, as they graduated from the university there. We're grateful for their experience over the last four years. And uh, I mentioned to you last week that we were going to ask them uh, the top three things that they've learned through their educational experience so far. And uh, I certainly did not expect them to give me an algorithm or some fact. I was really looking more at something that they could use their entire life. And out of the six things that were said, three from Carly, three from Matthew, uh, actually both of them gave two of the same. And, one, and I've got those right here so I don't mess them up. But uh, one is they learned how to learn. And uh, Carly even said, "Learning, I learned that learning was my responsibility, not the teacher's responsibility, but my responsibility. And I needed to become engaged to be able to learn. I needed to participate to learn, not just to sit there, not just to read, but to actually participate. So one was they learned how to, to learn. Um, Matthew said to become self-reliant, and I really think that that was for both of them because they both truly did become self-reliant. They really had to pay for most of their own way. They bartered, they traded, they finagled. Things were expensive in Hawaii, and they learned how to get by, get more for less. So I'm very proud of them for that. Carly also said, different than Matthew, said that um, she learned that if she does the right thing for the right reason, if she stays true to her principles, that no matter if there is an easier road to take over here, to take the high road or the tough road, always paid dividends and she had great stories behind how she applied those and what a difference it made to her life and how she can always look herself in the mirror when she does the right thing in the right way at the right time for the right reason. And then they both said that one of the great lessons that they learned there was they learned how to, well let me, this, let me get this down, they learned how to find themselves. And I thought that was very interesting to learn how to find yourself. You know oftentimes you hear people say, when things are, you're trying to, how do I do that? How do I? And they say, well, just be yourself. Just be yourself. Well, what does that mean? First of all, the word just implies simplicity. And I don't think it's really easy to just be yourself. It also implies that, that it's just some new idea that you came up with. Oh, here's a good idea. Just be yourself. What, what is yourself? What is you? What is the you that makes you, you? And you know, I think we're born into this world. I think we come into this life complete. Complete by the original definition, meaning that all of the parts are there. Everything that we have is necessary, laid out for us, right here within us, for us to be able to reach our objectives and to be able to accomplish anything and everything that we want to. But, I, but you know, I think that we complete, com, complete with our one true note, the note that we're destined to sing. Now, that note doesn't dictate what job or what profession you do, but it does dictate how you do it. You know, our own, I think our only job, our major job while we're here on earth is to be you. Your job is to be you and to be as good at being you as you can possibly be. You know, you look at life and you look at what role we want to have. I would say with every passing year, my job is to be baser and baser to what I already am. My job is to know who I am and how I can be more of that. And uh, as we get more familiar and knowledgeable about ourselves, then I think we become more authentic and we're able to give and create more and to do more. And we reach the new levels of meaningfulness that we've been talking about all along. You know, um, a lady by the name of Carolyn McHugh did a TEDx talk recently and she identified, I thought it was very fascinating, she identified four different types of you. Let me just share those with you briefly. The first type of you is the you that everybody thinks about you. Well, the one thing we know for sure is that nobody has the same thought about who you are. Everybody has something different, thinks about you differently than the other person. No two people think alike, but yet we're so concerned about that, which leads us to number two. And number two is what you would like everyone to think about you. And our perception, the perception you have of yourself and the perception that you would like them to have of you creates so much of our own behavior. It's unfortunate, but we, a lot of our behavior, a lot of what we 
want to become or what do we want to be perceived as is it an amalgamation of other people's perception of who we are we judge people way too much by the mask that we see them wearing and we expect people to judge us by the mask that we wear but in order to be ourselves we have to remove that mask to be able to truly be ourselves which leads us to the the third one which is still a, is part of the mask and that is our ego and the ego is what you think of you and um, you know our entire life our entire life from birth till today has been about building a stable relationship with your ego and how do you do that well ultimately as we build that stable relationship we start to discover the fourth level which is the you that is really you the you that showed up the day you were born the you that showed up when you were three four five six seven years old and the you that will still be there when you're 107 years old when you take away all the masks and all the trappings and you find that one note that makes you you your purpose here on this life and you're willing to step out and lead that purpose regardless of what others other people's perceptions are regardless of what you think you, other people's perceptions are regardless of what your ego is and the influence that it has but as you develop an ego that is strong as you learn to peel back that ego and actually let yourself understand that you are not always the center of attention that there is more to your ability that there is so much more for you to be able to learn in conclusion i think the thought that i brought away from that is something that i've heard several people say before but it's very meaningful Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. As we do that, we will find more meaning. We will become more, our lives will become more meaningful. So I don't know if it's a challenge, but let's try to peel back our ego. Let's try to find the real you that is inside of you. What is the you that makes you you? That's what we are here for to find out. What a wonderful journey we're on. Make this next week meaningful. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.